In this tutorial, we're going to take a deeper dive into Material X, specifically looking at the BSDF nodes that are part of Material X. I have a very simple scene here, which is a shader ball. And I have set a material on some components of the shader ball, but there is nothing authored in the material, so it's showing up here as black. There's just a simple HDRI scene in here and some Karma Render settings. If we dive inside our material library, there's a Karma Material X subnet, and inside it's empty except for the surface output and the Material X surface. In previous tutorials, I showed the standard surface here. The standard surface is a complete described surface so it has a surface out, which would plug right into here. However, we're going to be building our own surface. So we'll be using the BSDF input in the Material X surface node here. Let's start by adding a diffuse component. If we go to Material X and the PBR category, you'll see there are a lot of BSDFs that we can use. Specifically for diffuse, we've got the Orinator and we've got the Burley Diffuse. I'm going to grab the Burley Diffuse, and I'm going to plug that one right in. And let's make sure to start our render, and you'll see we get a nice gray sphere. We can adjust color, adjust roughness, and weight. Now, how do we add reflectivity to this? We want to go to our PBR and look for a dielectric BSDF. If I plug that in, you'll see that we get just the reflectivity here. And we have controls as you would expect, index of refraction, roughness, and weight. To layer these together, what we want is a Material X layer. So I'm going to put one in the top, one in the bottom, plug them together, and now we get reflectivity added in here. Now, the layer can be used to layer several of these if we wanted to. For instance, if we wanted to make something akin to carve shaders, we would have two of these. and we would layer one on top of the other and plug that in. So now we have something that's kind of like a coat layer. I'll bring the roughness down quite a bit. And then we have the regular standard layer here. To make this more apparent, I'm going to increase our index of refraction. I'll increase our roughness considerably, and I will tint this let's say this kind of pinkish hue there. So when you look at this now, you see that there's definitely several layers of things happening. So from here, we'll take a little bit more look at the dielectric. I'm going to put a new one down here, and I'm going to plug that into our BSDF. And I wanted to call out the scatter mode. So currently it's set to R, which is reflections, but you can change that to transmission or reflection and transmission. If I change that to transmission, you see it becomes glassy. However, we don't get the reflectivity component in here. I can change that to RT and we'll get both. Might be a little tough to see with this level of roughness, so I'm going to dial that down a lot. And you can tint this as well. Notice you have to be fairly subtle about the tinting. If you go deep here, the tint really does take over quite a bit. So be a bit subtle about how you use it, but fairly easy to get some glassy materials this way. What about metals? So if we go into our PBR and we look for the conductor BSDF, 
I'm going to make some room here. I plug that right in. We're going to get something that looks pretty much like a nice gold metal. Now this gets a bit strange because you'll notice that when I select a color, we're not getting the color here, but we're getting something somewhat across on the color wheel. It's a bit tough to use this way, but luckily there is a convenience node called the Artistic IOR, which plugs right into here like this. And now we get things that are a bit more like what we would expect to see. Now this has an edge color in here as well, which is a neat little feature. You can put that in here and you'll see that you do get some nice effects this way. There are a lot of VSTFs to play around with, and I urge you to take a look at them. You have things like uh, translucency, thin films, you've got subsurface in here. There's a lot to check out. Uh, it's worth looking at the Material X spec documents so that you understand what some of these are. But the basics are all here to build all different kinds of shaders and shading networks. Hopefully you found this tutorial interesting and helpful, and you'll be building some amazing shaders of your own.